For over two centuries, the Canoria family has built a legacy of reliability, integrity and commitment. Through generations, they have created enterprises that provide sustainability and have been engaged in value creation for its stakeholders. It firmly believes in its core philosophy, which is work with devotion. I and my family believe the work in the worship. We have to do our karma, which was taught by Lord Krishna to Arjuna in the battlefield of Mahabharata or Kutsitra. Our vision and mission is growing of the business, happiness of the family, welfare of the family, society, stakeholders, and the nation and overall the world. Kanodia Foundation की स्थापना का ध्येय है परिवार के सभी सदस्य मिलकर प्रेम से एक दूसरे के प्रति त्याग भावना रखते हुए अपने अच्छे कर्म करते रहें एवं सभी सुखी रहें तकलीफें आने पर उनका सामना मिलकर एक दूसरे के लिए करें यही हमारा उद्देश्य है The Kanodia family has been in business for over two centuries. But at no particular time, there has been any business which has seen the continuity for the last two centuries. So therefore, at various times through generations, basically the families have done well. They have gone in different directions, in different generations. And we thought that, you know, let us put everything together, the businesses and all the initiatives and enterprises into a foundation which can last for centuries and can last through generations. The philosophy behind Kanoria Foundation is that through hard work and through sincerity, a very successful and profitable organization can be created which can contribute to society. The foundation's core focus and ethos is to continuously work with devotion and see how we can develop uh, value systems, keep our people happy, ensure that there is equality amongst all the members within the family and uh, in the larger family too, uh, give value to merit and uh, value to hard work. I think what we have firmly believed as members of the foundation is that we are here uh, as human beings to do our duty which is our dharma and do our karma, which is our right action. The purpose behind the entire Kanoria Foundation is to have the family work together as a team and bring in our uh, internal and external teams to be able to all cohesively work together. Samudra Mantan is a great story about how the demons and God, they work together to churn with their hard work, the mighty ocean and from that ocean a lot of jewels came out and it was shared between both gods and demons who were always against each other. So this was the best way of demonstrating that how teamwork and how working together can result in emanating and originating a lot of jewels also from the depth of the ocean. The overall insignia which we have evolved and developed, that is the Samudra Manthan, primarily reflects the teamwork which is required to create anything. The Kanoria Foundation as a group is present across a wide spectrum of initiatives, from its various businesses, such as financial services, infrastructure development, health care, housing and hospitality, to its social foundation. The Kanoria Foundation's fundamental goals are to empower, uplift and continue to create opportunities for the betterment of the nation. Some of the activities uh, the, uh, uh, the Foundation is engaged is in the financial services business, the healthcare business, uh, the infrastructure development uh, business in, in the country and internationally too. And also along with that we give a lot of emphasis and focus to the CSR activities of the group. Through its flagship company, Shrey, 
The Canoria Foundation has been present in the financial services industry for almost 25 years. Stemmed from global partnerships, Shrey's iconic joint venture with BNP Paribas made it the largest equipment financing company in India with a market share of over 30%. With a strong emphasis on performance and customer service, Shrey has grown considerably over the last quarter century. In 1989, infrastructure in the country was in shambles and that was the time that we thought that it would be a good idea to get into a sector which would be critical for the development of the nation. We started with financing of equipments and gradually moved into financing of infrastructure projects and also development of infrastructure projects. We started off small as a uh, leasing and high purchase company for providing uh, solutions in the infrastructure equipment space and over the years it has grown uh, substantially. Primarily Shrey is engaged in uh, financing of infrastructure equipments, infrastructure projects uh, in all areas in the country. It provides advisory fee services to its clients, uh, primarily to government and private, uh, project development, insurance broking. Uh, we also make equity investments uh, in uh, such projects to support the customers and also create innovative solutions in the infrastructure space and make investment therein. Almost about uh, 15 years back, uh, we had created this concept of Kipo, where we provide quick equipment on rent. Uh, we started off with equip construction equipment rental, expanded into energy rental, expanded into oil and gas rental. This business was fairly unique at those times when India started off. Uh, because there were no equipments available on rent, we wanted to provide equipment along with manpower services to our customers in the infrastructure space. In Africa, a year back, we started the Power Initiative by uh, providing temporary power solutions in Nigeria. So this is picked up. Uh, we're operating some assets and we look to grow them. We are also doing uh, some initiatives in Kenya where we're looking at taking the Indian model of leasing uh, into Africa. Uh, because there again, you see a lot of dearth of capital, but demand for infrastructure is there. In our journey of innovation, we created the telecom infrastructure space in the country. Uh, that concept was not there in, the, in, in India. Uh, we were the first to uh, lead and start that when we saw a need of sharing uh, telecom infrastructure in the country. And in 2005, uh, Kipo Telecom got created. Post that, the growth happened, we did multiple acquisitions and ultimately we acquired the Tata's uh, business in the telecom infrastructure space and based on which uh, the company got uh, Viom and today we are one of the largest uh, telecom infrastructure provider in the country. One of the CSR activities uh, per se which can be sustainable and we started to develop as a business which also serves partly CSR and partly for creation of wealth, which goes well with our ethos of uh, the foundation, is our business called Sahaj, where we provide e-governance services along with other services at the village level. We have been able to create almost 27,000 such village level entrepreneurs in villages which has population of less than 10,000, uh, whereby at these centers, the citizen is able to get services on e-governance, on e-commerce and e-learning uh, at the village level. And the way we went about is uh, the ownership of these centers at the village is by an entrepreneur from that village. We have preferred a woman entrepreneur at the village who owns and operates these centers. And through these centers, all the services are provided to the citizen. Uh, we believe this is, uh, generates employment, it gen uh, exposes the people at the village uh, to the world, to what's happening, get better services at a low cost uh, and creates a sustainable development program at the village level in India. Shrey also found that there would be a need for a lot of development in infrastructure in a focused manner. And we saw an opportunity in the uh, special economic zones which the government was developing in, uh, through a public-private partnership and also for industrial parks. As a result, we went into that space uh, almost about eight, nine years back and we have been able to develop a decent portfolio uh, of investment in the special economic zone and the industrial parks 
in the country. We hope that in the future uh, there would be opportunities for uh, companies to come in and set up their facilities in these uh, zones. The Kanoria Foundation forayed into the healthcare sector. Currently, the business has crossed into the Asian market and owns and operates multi speciality hospitals for sustainable healthcare. We venture into the healthcare activity in India, so our aim is to set up a a strong healthcare focused organization. So we're setting up a large multi-speciality hospital in New Bombay. The aim of the hospital is to provide accident and trauma, neurosurgical services, organ transplantation and state-of-the-art cancer therapy which is desperately needed in India. My main focus is to develop a very high quality liver transplant center within the hospital. The purpose of our hospital is to cater to the middle class where affordability is a key issue. So to give to the middle class very high quality affordable care and that is how the organization has been streamlined to provide such care. We started a chain of dementia care homes in the in United Kingdom. So this has grown to be one of the best known and well-performing dementia care facilities in the UK. The Canoria Foundation is also present in the housing and hospitality sector through its real estate development arm, Shrishti. With a number of successfully completed mega townships and hotels, Shrishti is considered to be one of India's most reputed housing and hospitality brands today. You know, Shrishti is an ancient Sanskrit word which means creation and that's why uh, our punchline is welcome to life. Whatever we do in Shrishti, we do real estate, hospitality and commercial. So whatever we do in the real estate developments, we think of it as something which will welcome you to live in that particular area or enjoy your life by living there. Shristi was a company which was started off because again we felt that there was a need in the semi-urban areas to develop townships and to provide modern amenities. The Asansol Durgapur project which we have done, we have done it as a joint venture with the government, with the Asansol and Durgapur Development Authority. And that's why we did a public-private partnership wherein the government brought in the land as the equity and we brought in money as the equity and we were doing the entire planning and development and it has become a very very important development in that particular area. The legacy of India Power Corporation Limited or India Power dates back to the year 1919 through its distribution division known as the Shetgar Power Supply Company DPSC making it one of India's oldest power distribution companies. Looking towards the future, India Power is diversifying into power generation and alternative energy such as solar and wind. Innovation and safety are core to India Power's values. IPCL has been um, in the business of distribution of electricity. We have a, a license to distribute electricity in the area of Asansol and Raniganj in West Bengal. Also, we have obtained the rights to distribute electricity in Gaya, Bihar. The family ventured into this particular business and after that, it has grown in the generation business, wind power, solar, thermal power plant, distribution of other areas also. And over a period of time, it has expanded quite well. And we expect that in the next two to three years, we'll have around 2000 megawatt of conventional and renewable energy in our portfolio. A couple of the main uh, philosophies of IPCL it, uh, works around efficiency, reliability and customer care. That allows us uh, to access our consumers in a much more reliable manner. And I think going forward, we would want to maintain the same uh, level of efficiency and reliability in all our endeavors. The Canoria Foundation has a strong presence in the education sector both for the underprivileged children as well as through its higher learning programs in management. 
The Foundation firmly believes that the children of today need to be given a solid foundation in order for our nation to grow. Under this uh, banner of Shea Foundation, we are promoting the education, we're giving assistance to underprivileged for education. We realized that time there was lack of training institute which trained students for different jobs and competitive exams. So there were hardly any institute where they could get this training. We want them to be a complete and very, very good human being. We are trying to uh, target the parents so they also can learn something and can earn something. So we are teaching them computer, little craft work, card making, envelope making, and then we'll put an exhibition so they can earn their money of that. But our family, it is our tradition to do service to the society. The most important uh, aspect of life for me is giving back, giving back in every which way be it monetary, be it love, be it um, support for people who really need it or don't need it. Sometimes we give back even with a smile. It makes a world of a difference to the people around you. Until unless our grassroots are absolutely cleared out and educated, I feel there would still be a huge gap between what we dream and what we achieve. So for all of us to be on the same plane and for all of us to be with the mission of a Swachh Bharat and a complete Bharat, I think this is extremely important. One of the other activities uh, as a CSR which uh, the foundation is also engaged is in the Asset Survivors uh, Foundation. We believe that through this foundation we are trying to support them in whatever manner we can to help them to build a better life for themselves in spite of having victims of such atrocities. This uh, concept is the world confluence of humanity, power and spirituality. We, I believe and my family believe that the spirituality ignite the humanity in a person. It also ignite the inner power which one has. Swami can said, one has the authentic power in oneself. It needs to be awakened, ignited. I would just like to read the family prayer for everyone to remember. O oh Lord, we thank you for your infinite grace. You have meticulously planned to bring each one of us together as a family. It is you who has decided parents, spouses, children, brothers, sisters, nephews, nieces, and beautiful relationship of in-laws. We choose friends with our limited wisdom. You decide relationships and relatives with your divine wisdom. Your grace overflows in relationships in the family, health, wealth, wisdom, and is every sphere of our lives. You have made us custodians of your wealth to take care of ourselves and society. We pray to you to grant us the wisdom to be judicious in spending on ourselves. We pray to you to grant us the wisdom to be large-hearted while spending on you and prudent when spending on others. O oh Lord, always make us humble, the wealthier, the healthier, more famous that you make us, please grace us with humility. O oh Lord, we humbly seek your forgiveness for times when we have hurt or have got hurt in thought, words or deeds. O oh Lord, let us always acknowledge your presence and grace in whatever we, we get or do. O oh Lord, in this eternal cosmos, we are an insignificant particle. Please always let us feel your presence 
constantly. O oh Lord, we again thank you for your grace. The moral of this particular episode is what Lord Rama has promised to his Guru are four things to be the take homes and which people need to remember. शिष्य की परिभाषा तुम पर समाप्त हो जाती है प्रश्न के उत्तर के रूप में यदि तुम मुझे कुछ भेंट करना चाहते हो तो बताओ गुरु क्या है गुरु की आवश्यकता क्या है जिस प्रकार सूर्य के उदय ना होने से रात्रि का अंधकार नहीं मिट सकता उसी प्रकार बिना गुरु के अज्ञान का अंधकार कभी नहीं मिट सकता गुरुदेव एक अशिक्षित व्यक्ति तो जीवित होते हुए भी एक शव के समान होता है जिसके लिए विद्या और ज्ञान जीवनदायी अमृत है और गुरु ही वो अमृत कलश हैं, जिनमें ज्ञान रूपी अमृत भरा हुआ रहता है गुरु एक नन्हे से बालक ध्रुव को महान बना सकते हैं जिसके समक्ष स्वयं ईश्वर को भी झुकना पड़ता है गुरु हिरण्य जैसे ईश्वर विरोधी राक्षस के घर ईश्वर भक्त प्रहलाद को जन्म दे सकते हैं गुरु ही तो धर्म और कर्म की व्याख्या करते हैं यदि आपने मुझे अपना शिष्य स्वीकार न किया होता गुरुदेव तो इस राम को कैसे क्या होता कि मानव जीवन केवल चार सिद्धांतों चार आदर्शों पर चलकर पूर्ण हो सकता है ये चार सिद्धांत और चार आदर्श कौन से है वत्स गुरुदेव प्रथम आदर्श है सत्य का मार्ग सत्यम वद दूसरा आदर्श है धर्म का आचरण धर्मचर धर्मात्मा केवल वही व्यक्ति हो सकता है गुरुदेव जो मर्यादा का पालन करता है इसीलिए मेरे लिए मर्यादा ही धर्म का दूसरा नाम है गुरुदेव जहां मर्यादा नहीं हो वहां धर्म नहीं है तीसरा आदर्श है आत्मनिरीक्षण स्वाध्याय स्वाध्यायान मां प्रमदा जब व्यक्ति स्वयं के अंतर में झांक कर देखता है गुरुदेव तब उसे अपने उत्तरदायित्व का ज्ञान होता है जिसका पालन अवश्य होना चाहिए और चौथा एवं अंतिम आदर्श है अपने लक्ष्य का ज्ञान और उस लक्ष्य की प्राप्ति के लिए सही दिशा का ज्ञान यदि दिशा सही हो गुरुदेव तो लक्ष्य बड़ी सरलता से प्राप्त हो सकता है अन्यथा एक दिशाहीन व्यक्ति आजीवन भटकता रहता है गुरुदेव वत्सराम गुरु ने तो सिद्धांत बता दिए यह मार्ग दिखा दिया परंतु सिद्धांतों का पालन करना और इस मार्ग पर चलना भी तो आवश्यक है यदि शिक्षा को जीवन में न उतारा जाए तो उसका क्या लाभ है वत्स तुम अपने जीवन में इस शिक्षा को उतारो यही इस वशिष्ठ के लिए गुरु पूर्णिमा की भेंट होगी गुरुदेव आज ये दाशरथ ही राम आपको वचन देता है कि जीवन भर सत्य के मार्ग पर चलूंगा परिणाम जो कुछ भी हो सदैव मर्यादा का पालन करूंगा किसी भी मूल्य पर अपने अंतर से अपनी दृष्टि कभी नहीं हटाऊंगा अपने उत्तरदायित्व के पालन में कोई बाधा नहीं आने दूंगा दिशा ज्ञान के बिना किसी भी पथ पर पग नहीं रखूंगा और जिस पथ पर पग रखूंगा अपने लक्ष्य की प्राप्ति तक चलता रहूंगा स्वयं के प्रिय से प्रिय की पुकार पर भी पीछे मुड़कर कभी नहीं देखूंगा हे गुरुदेव आज गुरु पूर्णिमा के दिन ये राम की गुरु दक्षिणा है स्वीकार कीजिए गुरुदेव स्वीकार कीजिए so these are the four very strong lessons which come out of this particular episode of the dialogue between lord rama and his guru vashishth